Questions are encompassed in the sort of uh, cap, right? Yes. Uh, we went over uh, the question of the, the people of the cave and uh, the question of uh, the mountain or, or, or the name, uh, and the question are the wise men uh, with Moses, and the question of um, uh, the soul in us, and what is the soul? And um, these were given to them by a Jewish uh, rabbi in Yethro that they went to to seek uh, help. The pagans went to to seek help uh, in discrediting the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. They felt as though uh, the, the rabbi would know if this person was uh, lying or not, and if he could not answer these questions, and that would serve as proof. Um, the prophet could answer the questions and did answer the questions, but it came at a later date because he did not uh, invoke uh, uh, the remembrance of the laws of Allah to Allah when assuming that uh, he would get revelation. When he was receiving the revelation, it would come. Uh, uh, periodically, or it would come uh, religiously, right? And so he assumed, without saying in the law, that Jabril would come the next day as what had happened for, you know, uh, that that was occurring uh, repetitively before then, that, that meeting with Jabril. He thought, all right, well, it comes tomorrow. I'll have it for you tomorrow. And then a loss of to Ta'ala made it so it didn't come for a few weeks. But it did come, and um, all of the answers were answered. Uh, they asked the question of the soul, and um, their expectation, and the rabbi's expectation, was that if he really knows, then he doesn't, he won't uh, have an answer for it. And as expected, um, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala uh, made it clear that uh, nobody knows about. Uh, the soul, um, except for the little. And what little you do know, um, you don't even appreciate, you don't use. Right? Um, sort of the calf is very extensive. It's a very beautiful sort of uh, where to read it every Friday, I guess, for a, a reason of how, you know, it doesn't matter how many times you, you read it, you can derive so many understanding so much uh, benefit from uh, hearing uh, these these stories um, or this history uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, cites and um, it would take you can you can do this whole class on just sort of look at so um, if there are any questions or anything we can ask them or we can answer but uh, we just we just uh, zoom through sort of the cap um because each one is a is, is a, a class in itself each story uh, in itself um and then we went over the ages right the ages uh of the prophet and his family right now <laughs> Right, so um, two of his daughters are married, um, Zainab and uh, Rukhaya. 
and then Zoom is uh, still a preteen, and Katrina uh, is 11 years old around this time. Zane, Zane, how does that is 36? He was still in the house of the office so of the so. And um uh Umayman is his uh wet nurse uh, lives with him um in his house. We don't know her age, but she outlived the prophet who's invested to be upon him. And um it's a lot of uh, scholars say or acknowledge how sad it is that uh, she was not approached more um, after the death of the prophet to um, kind of retrieve knowledge about the prophet and his childhood and things of that nature. But a lot of There's also um, Ali, Abu Talib, and um, he's 14 at this age, around, around 14 in that age. Um, and that's the nephew and uh, adopted nephew of uh, the prophet. So, uh, so um, his father is Abu Talib, the prophet. Something. And Khadija. And many, many differ about the age of Khadija. Um, some say she was younger than uh, what was previously uh, understood or what most commonly understood today. Um, and more closer to the age of the prophet, he's a message to be upon him. But uh, there are two opinions. So, whichever you feel is the best. Okay, and this is information that we need when we get into the band. Okay, and this is late Mecca that we're in now. So, uh, late Mecca starts in the seventh year of uh, of the uh, of the calendar. Of the timeline, the seventh year of receiving revelation, seventh year, um, it becomes so tense that um, a ban starts to take place. And this is uh, a boycott, right? Uh, these are tribes that all got together, all of the clansmen uh, got together and decided that. Uh, if Hashem, the prophet's tribe, if the Hashem tribe clan is not going to uh, uh, keep the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, from purveying his message, um, then they will have to take out their uh, aggression on the entirety of the clan. Right? And it was a notion not of we're going to try to kill you or just let you die off, but more so um, we're not going to share our resources if you're going to uh, separate yourself from our society, what we know to be uh, right and, and uh, the way of our life. So if you don't want to participate in that, or if you don't want to extract the one that is uh, causing this division uh, in their eyes, then we will just stop doing business with your tribe. Right, and another tribe got uh, pulled into that. Does anybody know <coughs> which tribe that is? Tribe closest to the Hisham 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 tribe. Hisham tribe. The Nafa. <coughs> no. Nafa. No, not Nafa. No, not the color. Hmm? Oh, I mean, I'm just thinking of the one. Yes, it is the color. Um, the color tribe has a close connection with uh, with Hashem. 
um, and uh, they're very closely related uh, as well. And <laughs> they, they were combined in that boycott um, because the Montana plan will not um, sever ties with Hessian. So it was, it was the Hessian plan and the Charlie plan that were both being boycotted against? Yes. Yes. And so uh, they both were suffering uh, during this time. And we just discussed it, but what do you think the point of the ban was? You know, they there was their uh, religion. Until, okay. until they give up their religion and stop separating themselves from the rest of um, Mecca, you know, it's going to be boycotted. Yeah. Um, it's a disruption in the economy, right? Like you're disrupting our economy. We can't have this. So we're just going to cut you off from the economy. And hopefully that will deter you and make you change your ways. Maybe make the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, change his ways as well. So during the ban, um, much of what was sent down in the Quran was reminders from the prophets that came before. So Asa, um, Moses, Jonah, Noah, Noah, Alayhi Salam. Um, why do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is emphasizing these uh, these prophets that, that came before during this boycott? The prophets that went through very significant trial. Um, similar to what the prophet was going through when that was going to say at that time. Um, Jonah, um, Noah. Yeah, what do they all have in common? People were rejected. Yeah, people reject them. Why? Why did they reject them? Because they were offering something that was different from the normal. Yes. Yes. That prophets each had to be tested. Yes, they were offering something that was different from their society norm. Right, they were changing the framework of their society. Their society was based on corruption or whatever. They were changing that, and it kind of does a good job in the uh, quote from the uh, book uh, Ramadan, um, where he says, and see if this sounds familiar, you know. Um, and when they refused, had had also warned their people to reform uh, their behavior. Right, these prophets had also warned their people to reform their uh, reform their behavior, and when they refused. The societies had collapsed um, because they were not acting in accordance with the fundamental principles of the universe. When they oppress the weak and refuse to share their wealth fairly with the poor, this violation of Allah's law is an unnatural, is as unnatural as though a fish were to live or try to live outside of uh, in dry land. A disaster was inevitable, right? Does that not remind you of our society today? Or through society, you see the similarity. Yeah, the oppression of the weak and refusal to share their wealth fairly with the poor. You know how many billionaires we got in America? Well, I guess 1,000. 1,000 uh, billionaires in America, and 1% of all the population goes like better. Go for you. Better. Right. Uh, so go. we see how wealth isn't circulating, and we see how that is oh. leading to kind of the demise of this so called uh, system, right? Where people start to want change. And, and seek change and when a better way or a better, um, uh, what's it called? A better way of thinking comes about, they're really open to it. Right? They're open to uh, that change. Um, during 
with slavery uh, and even uh, uh, not Fred Hampton, even in uh, the late uh, of the mid 1900s, like Fred Hampton um, was 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 harmful because he got people to try to from different walks of life, right, to come together and equally be mad at the government. Right and collect, have a collective power. Right, he goes to the Ku Klux Klan and says, "Are you mad at the government? Me too." <laughs> right? He goes to the Hispanics, "Are you mad at the government? Right, me too." And we have something that we can come together with and narrowly focus on, on to get to uh, a goal that I guess we all want is that independence from a system that doesn't work for the the layman and the layman people. Well, with slavery, slavery, it, it, it was uh, more of a social construct than it was just about race, right? Um, the only way they could make those that didn't own slaves agree with the system and be a part of the system is to what? Yeah, make it about race, right? Make it about black and versus white. So you poor living down the street as a white man, and you ain't got nothing. At least you're not black. <laughs> it still works, right? Yeah, it still works to divide. It's what people get you to focus on, rich people, right? Because only a few people can own slaves. You have to be rich to own slaves in that time. Most people weren't that wealthy, right? And so, in order to get you to focus on other things, you have to uh, confuse the minds of people, right? And don't let them notice that you're a call light and attention to the obvious, right? And this is what the Prophet Solomon was doing. He's calling attention to what is blatantly obvious. And they're like, whoa, hold on, man. You want it? What you got going good here, right? He tried to bribe him with wealth multiple times. And uh, he continuously refuses, right? Um, they tried to tell Abu Muntalib, uh, or uh, Abu Talib, Abu Talib, uh, they tried to tell him to give up the prophet, uh, let, give, give him away from Hashem. Tried, he wouldn't, he wouldn't do it, right? Uh, he would not do it, and he refused to do it. So this leads to the boycott. You know, we have starvation, uh, deadly siege. Um, nobody's able to buy from stores. Nobody's able to get anything from the caravans. But um, also, a lot of uh, Muslims who are the accepted Islam, who are not of these tribes, tried to help as well. Uh, one level was Abu Bakr. Um, uh, from the Tam tribe, uh, our clan. Um, Abu Bakr would send like, goods and things. Um, other uh, other rich or more wealthy um, companions would send, like maybe they'll send uh, uh, a camel loaded with goods and they'll just send them in un, uh, unattended uh, and just wander into wherever they were um, outside of, of Mecca in the desert um, and their camp encampments um, send the camel in and they would get all of the supplies and stuff from the camel and they would also use the camel for meat and, and things of that nature. So would have to send it back, right? Um, and this is and they would sneak food, things of that nature all the time. But this is like this it still doesn't take away the effect, right? Because you have to do it um, secretively and you cannot be boisterous about it, or else you probably would lead your plan to be in a, um, in a, uh, either they would take them away, regardless, they would, they would, even if you tried to, they would block it or they would uh, stop it from coming, right? You see that today in Gaza, where they were, you know, we have truckloads of goods ready to come in. And then people just stand in and tear that up, destroying it. Mm -hmm. Right? Same same kind of concept. Secret the 
is the secret um, uh, stash is a secret way of uh, giving these uh, uh, vital needs uh, to, to people. And there's a lot of resources in the area that the Israeli government knows that they want to control as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Complete control is all about uh, control. You know, it's uh, manufacturing a, a, a family. Right? So you can say, I didn't do it, you just died himself, right? Um, Hakeem Ibn Hazm will provide food uh, for Khadijah's Khadijah nephew, will provide food for the tribe as well. Um, he's the one who purchased Zayd Ibn Haritha and gave to Khadijah um, after many years. Um, he was, he's a Muslim. Uh, uh, he didn't accept Islam um, until after the conquest of, of Mecca. But he was still uh, sympathetic and uh, empathetic to uh, the band, which most most people were at that time. If you read about this band, you get the sense that most people were not like uh, on board. It felt like maybe it was their only option or whatever have you, but they weren't necessarily on board or okay with it. So it was very hard to see their extended family suffer. Uh, for that long, and and some some of the clan that I'm suffering weren't even Muslim, right? They weren't, but they were just a part of that clan, and they're not going to. We suffer, we all suffer. Not Abu Lahab. Abu Lahab just denounced Hashim, and um, for that time period, and uh, so he didn't. He wasn't affected by the ban, right? Uh, but others, others were. So. So it didn't stop the Prophet from visiting uh, the sacred title, um, not all the time. Uh, he still had the protection of uh, Abu Talib, which means something. Um, but he was harassed more, right? He was um, uh, talked bad about more and, and argued with more uh, during those times. Um, some believe that this is the time when uh, Abu Jal uh, convinced the, the other uh, uh, man to pick up the guts of the camel while the Prophet saw his soul was praying and put it on him so much that he cannot move, right? Which makes sense around this time that that would happen. Um, and also they say that it was after uh, Abu Talib uh, passed. Um, when the ban was lifted, uh, there was a lot of uh, arguments within the clan, right? Um, uh, Hashem Ibn uh, Amr was the one who initiated uh, the, the lifting of the ban. Um, there was a revelation uh, that as the contract had been, uh, they put a contract of this band where all tribes signed onto the contract. Some, Mutala didn't sign onto the contract, and that's why they were part of the band, right? But they, they put a contract and they put it in the father uh, for these three years, and over time, um, there was revelation to the prophet that uh, the, the contract had been eaten up by worms, right? Um, and they used the the prophet told them, and Hashem is uh, of the mindset like, okay, we can we can work with this. Um, if it be the case that this contract is eaten up, then um, if it is, then we should just stop the ban, right? Because um, this is it's terrible. And if it's not, then we'll, we'll go from there and right? we'll keep it going. I will never have it. Um, they open up the Kaaba and they see that only the words um, in the name of the one in the in your name, O God, are are remaining. 
everything else is eaten up by worms, right? Yes. Could it be that they were frightened and startled that that was the only thing remaining from the contract that sort of shook them? You know, that this is not even worth Can he hold on to his piece of uh, written contract we agreed to? Yeah. Well, imagine, like, these are their family members. These are not, these are close relatives, cousins, right? Uh, and they're watching their family, like, struggle and, like, kind of, like, starve to death, right? Um, this is the year of sadness where Abu Talib dies and Khadija dies. And a lot of it is just they, they attribute to this band, right? So even them, they couldn't even stand it. After a while, three years of this, three years of having to sneak stuff in, if you're able to, uh, they couldn't even stand it, right, over time. So it was this buildup of, all right, please just um, either uh, stop preaching what you're preaching or whatever, or uh, we have to find some type of compromise. But why did they go to, to, uh, to read the contract? I mean, why? What took place for them? Because the prophet took, had revelation that it would, had been destroyed, right? They heard. He told them that the, that it had been destroyed, and Hashem, um, Hashem, uh, Hisham, Hisham didn't know. He facilitated that um, that agreement that if it is, then uh, we should go and see the contract. We should go and pull the contract out. If it is, uh, like the prophet said, then so be it. Like this is done. And if not, then we need to change or we need to do something um, better. Uh, it was by this time, they were ready for it to, to end. Everybody was ready for the band to end. They didn't feel like it was working. It wasn't working. It was just causing um, uh, more harm and division that they didn't even want to <laughs> cause in the first place. They wanted to stop the division. Um, I lost the panel to Alice in that revelation. I have um, uh, the moon, and he says, <laughs> "This was a miraculous sign, right? That that, that worms had eaten up this uh, this 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 uh, contract." He says, "The hour of judgment is near, and the moon has split in half. However, if they see a miracle, they turn away and say, just some kind of fading magic. They deny such miracles." and follow their own main desires. So this is around the time where the prophet saw it, so split the moon as well. They asked him, right? They asked him, they went to the prophet, they said, um, if you're such, such <laughs> if you're this and that, God sends miracles, all right, and split the moon. <laughs> and the prophet saw it, so it splits the moon. Yeah, now I'm getting some comments here. Yeah, and you can see uh, scientists have Study the moon. They say at some point in time, the moon was split in half. They they dated back to millions of years or whatever have you, but a long island, and the law knows how his system works and can work. So he splits the moon. And even, you know, what's fascinating is that there are recollections, if you study the history of people in different areas around that time frame, also seeing the moon split and, and documenting. Uh, what they saw, right? Um, and it's 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 just passed down as as folklore, or tales, or whatever, or myths, or whatever. But they, he did it, right? And they see it, and they still don't. Get it. They 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 attribute it to oh, it's just a mirage, right? It's just some some magic. It's not real, right? So it's like a loss of fellow about it says in the Quran, even if he bought angels. Right to to tell you what you claim that you're going to believe if the angel comes and tells you this and that and the third, you still wouldn't believe. Right? And only a loss of all the other guys. So it was only until they saw the document that had been eaten. They didn't care about that. No. They didn't care. They, they but it did confirm that, you know, contracts are everything. Um, if you have a written contract, right? And what it was, it was a sentiment that if this contract is messed up, if this contract is no more, then we should just forget about the bank. And
And so it worked out that way, that um, it just was convenient that the contract had been eaten up, right? And they don't pay too much money to the obvious, right? But uh, for us, it's, it's obvious, right? Also during this time, so when the ban was lifted, uh, word got back to Abyssinia and some who were in Abyssinia came back to uh, to Mecca, right? They felt as though, okay, the band's lifted, conditions may be better. Um, we come back and, and going to profit, peace and blessings be upon him. Um, of those who were uh, on the Salima, um, his men, and uh, Bukaya, Abu Salama, um, Abu Hudayfa, they all returned from Abyssinia, and um, uh, it says uh, they were provided guardianship from uh, Wadi, and he says, "I would have protected. I would have the." I would have the protection of God, and I desire not the protection of any but Him. Um, this is poetry. Uh, some of the companions were lacking um, protection, and, and that was uh, what they would say. Um, there's also another moment where a poet, and they have famous poets at this time, right? And they come and they travel. Much like we had famous singers uh, who come and travel and, and sing, they would come and travel and you know, recite their famous poetry. And one of the poets said something that was uh, very similar to the message of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, which was uh, low. Everything except God is not, and all delights away shall vanish. And this is basically saying that uh, everything of God will uh, perish, right? Everything on this earth, all your delights and stuff will perish and only God will remain. Um, and his men, Ibn Nazun, was... Uh, he was a close friend of the Prophet. Uh, I don't know if he was Muslim at this time, but he 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 didn't believe those words. He um, he emphatically spoke out against him. It was like how like I mean all the desires, all the delights of this world is are going to vanish. What are you saying? This witchcraft for and then. The prophet, he suggests to be upon him, corrects him. He actually, um, the poet hit him in the head, <laughs> hit him um, between the eyes, and he said, But um, the prophet uh, reaffirmed this um, that, that this is correct. And a loss of penalty to Adam, he affirms it in his revelation in Al Qasas and Al Ahmed. Um, Allah says, uh, Don't call upon any god other than God. For well, there is no God besides him. Everything will pass away except his face. The power to command is his, and you will all be brought back to him. And then uh, Abraham says, All who are on earth shall pass away, but the face of the Lord will last forever, full of majesty and honor. So which of the favors of the Lord will be denied? Right? And so we know that in our religion, um, when the day of judgment comes and when everyone is wiped out, it's not just all the human, it's all the creation. Everything that's ever created, um, that Allah's ever created, wiped out and obliterated completely. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends praise upon himself. It says, uh, now who is worthy of all praise? Surely, I am. And nobody else is there to answer but a loss of And then he brings uh, the creation back in 
the end judgment of proceedings. So how long? Okay, so. Okay, so we'll go over the loss of Abitalib and uh, the loss of Panayinja. Um, the loss of Abitalib comes first, and the Prophet وسلم, loves Abu Talib. This is his uncle. This is uh, who took care of him when he was orphaned like multiple times, right? Um, is the brother of his uh, father. Um, and uh, his love for Abu Talib is similar to the love that uh, Noah had for his son, right? Um, and some of the aspects of how uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam um, and his father's relationship um, were, were similar as well. How Ibrahim would pray for his father and Allah would uh, correct him not to. Um, same with Abu Mutali. Um, it's said that uh, the Prophet tried and tried and tried to get Abu Mutali to uh, convert. And to say uh, the Shahada, he tried his best. He, he continued to try and try on his deathbed to say the words. Um, but as he was about to, um, he says one quote um, that if I did not fear that the Quraysh would think I had but said the words in dread of death. <laughs> Then would then would I say them? Right? So if he didn't think that just because he was or they would think, yeah, my battery's low. Um he didn't think uh, he thought that um uh, if it weren't because that uh they would think that he was scared of death, and that was the only reason that he would accept Islam and they would talk about him after his death, that so that's why he did that. Was the only reason he did He did it. That's what he says. He, that he did take a shahadatay. And the Prophet tries to convince him yeah. otherwise. Um, care but what people say, care about what people don't say. Right. Yeah. That. Yeah. That's the, that's the, that's the, you know, that's the, uh, yeah, that's, the time. that's the disposition <laughs> of that, that, that culture, right? Yeah. That ideology is that, um, even if it's against yourself, you're going to, to you die, stand on whatever it is you think is principle. But maybe, I mean, you could have also potentially done it for the Prophet as an exception because maybe he's saying, I don't want to give them any reason to, to not think that this was a reason. It's just adding more fuel to the fire for the. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just because the prophet talks about it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. the prophet talks about it after uh, it's very extensive about it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's a very uh, uh, optimistic way to think about it. Yeah. There are a lot of people even as well think like that. Yeah. You know, they're yeah. concerned about <laughs> people's perception yeah. of them and what yeah. they may say. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. That, that's the way people are. Yeah, that's um, that being stubborn. You think? Well, I just think that's a, a custom. I think that's a tradition yeah, that yeah. they have uh, learned to deal yeah. with or learn to accept. Because people really are concerned. Oh, they just think what people gonna say about you if you do such and such a thing. Yeah, you know? that's what they're worried about. about. People think that way. They're more worried about their social structure, the peer pressure, than they are about something new that. That makes more sense. It doesn't matter how much sense it makes. What matters is um, what my forefathers practiced, right? Um, logic can go out the window. Um, I will tell him, uh, it, uh, the Prophet talks about him afterwards. He, the Prophet um, prays for Abu Talib, right? Even after death, um, makes dua for Abu Talib. And also, after Abu Talib's death, um, the Prophet doesn't have any protection anymore. That's one thing. But he also, that's, that's Ali, uh, that's Ali's father, um, who, who's in the house of the Prophet. So, so, so he tells Ali to go, 
go to your father and, and bury him. And Ali is like, wow, what do you mean bury him? He's a mystery. Like, he's like a disbeliever. He died upon a disbeliever. What do you mean I'm burying him? The prophet says, go bury him. And so he goes and he buries his father. And I'm sure it meant a lot to him to be able to bury his father. Um, and he said, go bury him and don't and just come back. Right? So there's no prayer or janazah or anything. You just bury him and come back. And we derive from this, you know, we have many family members that pass and aren't Muslim. Uh, some will say that, oh, well, you're not supposed to go to a funeral for somebody that's not Muslim. Uh, but uh, we have this example in the Sira where um, we know that this is not the case, that you can uh, participate in the funeral proceedings um, so long as you don't, you know. Uh, do some type of give some type of rights that only Muslims should have uh, during their death. Right? So the Prophet would, uh, after Ali comes back, the Prophet makes dua for his uncle, tries to make as much dua as he can. And then this is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends revelation, um, correcting him. Um, this is when he sends revelation, correcting him. Um, let's see. Allah says in uh, Surah at Tawbah, Surah at Tawbah, um, repentance. It is this is uh, verse 113 and 114. 9, 113? Um, yes, 9, 113 and 114. Uh, he says, It is not right for the Prophet. And the believers to pray for the forgiveness of idol worshippers, even if they are close to relatives. After it's been made clear to them that they're going to be companions of the raging ladies. Abraham only prayed for his father's forgiveness because of a promise he had made to him. However, when it became clear to him that his father was an enemy of God, he distanced himself from him. It was just, it was just that Abraham was accustomed to invoking God frequently, and he was for them. He could be surprised to communication. Yeah. Because we have most of our work is our Christian. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us we feel compelled to attend the services. And sometimes we're even actually speaking on what we have. So with that passage, what is it saying? Because we know our family members are Christian, they believe in God. Or people go to them in the matter they want to say they're Muslim, but they are believers and their behavior have demonstrated that they are believers and they you know live a moral life. So well, let's put that in the context. You can live, you can be a good person and still go ahead. Right. Um, there were some good people around the prophet, pagans, good people that, that he loved and that were nice and kind to him. And uh, even Abu Lahab, when, when no, not even before Prophet, uh, when Abu Talib died, Abu Lahab, um, the prophet was getting ridiculed and the aggression increased. But Abu Lahab is now the, the leader of Hashem. Because he's the second in command, he's the oldest, there's nobody else that can lead Hashem. He's the leader of Hashem, right? And so Prophet is under his care. Um, and he tells the Prophet, he feels he gets a weak moment, tells him, you know, whatever you have with Abu Talib, you can have, right? This lasts three weeks. <laughs> three weeks. <laughs> He can only two do for three weeks. That's three weeks. <laughs> and 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 the prophet, uh, well, Abu Jal uh, is kind of the uh, instigator, which he says, you know, ask him what's what's gonna happen, or uh, where's your father? Like, what does he think of your father? Where's your father now? And um, so Abu Lahab goes and, and asks him, asks the prophet, where where's what's happening? What's with my father? Who is he? Where is he? Um, and, and the prophet says, uh, your father is with his people. And he just leaves it at that, right? And not saying anything else, right? And there's, 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 uh, there's knowledge in that response. 
But then he goes back to Abu Jal, and Abu Jal says, Who are you? Who do you know? <laughs> Where are his people? Did you ask him that? Where are his people? <laughs> and so when he finds out that uh, his people are in the hellfire, he uh, relinquishes that protection, um, and which is, you know, uh, expected. That's still wisdom of the prophets or not. Incite him right, right there in his yes, face. Right. Yes, yes. But I think that applies to him because he rejected this one. I don't think that applies to Christians yeah. who do not have the understanding and not really reject reject Islam. Because um, in my heart of hearts, my parents were Christian, yeah. and they did not say one word when I became a. They and my mother told my sisters to leave me alone. That's the bottom me. And so did they, my husband as well. And so, and I know that because I didn't say, oh, I want y'all to become Muslim. I never said that. Mm -hmm. But uh, they didn't reject what I became. So I know that they are in no hell by because they weren't Muslim. Well, we don't know, right? We don't know how you're going to be judged on the day of judgment. But didn't the Prophet say you're going to be judged by the book? You're going to be judged by the book that so that some can argue that the Quran is here, Muslims are here, and you are part of their uh their judgment that you became Muslim and you showed them, you know, what Islam is, and they should have uh you know, no compulsion in Islam. Yeah, yeah, no compulsion. They should have, have uh that should have been a means to them uh gaining more information on coming kill. I would have had to write down. That's that's it. It's not my my saying that's the case. Isn't it the case that each people will be judged according to? Yeah. So let's let's define what a Catholic is, right? Let's define what I think that will help. We define what a Catholic is. The difference between Abu Talib and others is that his nephew was in fact uh, the prophet. Mm -hmm. Right. His nephew was a prophet, and he was giving him doubt, like he was giving him the knowledge that he needs no. to um, accept Islam. And he was, he had everything he needed. Right? Um, he had the knowledge of, of the prophet, he had the knowledge of what was what right and wrong. He acknowledged it as well. So, Somebody who has everything they need for belief but doesn't act upon it is a Catholic, right? So it's a disbelief. Our Christian brothers and sisters don't necessarily have everything that they need to, to act upon uh, our, for, for valid purposes, right? Sometimes that falls on us as Muslims, not giving valid properly, and other times it's just. Uh, that Islam is new to this, not new to this land, but uh, it's not many of us. Right? We're outnumbered, we're living in a Christian land, we're not going to convert everybody. The Abyssinians didn't convert many of anybody really uh, when they were uh, around in Abyssinia until later times, right? Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear, and the Prophet so someone makes it clear that you're judged based on what you know yeah. and based on. Uh, what you what you claim to be, right? So if somebody is sincere in their faith, yeah. the, the, the Bible should lead you to a righteous life, being a righteous person, or whatever have you, and should lead you to understand that there may be something else as well. If you're serious in this life, right? Now, you have to be exposed to the truth and then you have to deny it. Right? 
think it being Muslims that are exposed to Al Islam and the truth and do not act upon that exposure, right? They don't pray or they don't fast or they don't whatever have you. They'll be if they die upon that, they'll be in Jahannam. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, tells us, right? That uh, a disbeliever is somebody who has uh, everything they need to believe and doesn't act upon it, right? It's, it's faith, but without action, uh, right? But even we talk in terms of doing Dawa to the universe. And so in doing the Dawa to the universe, I mean, Islam is to grow. So if you're saying they have to verbalize, say there is no God but God, to not be considered a, 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 a Catholic. Is that what you're saying? They have to verbalize this, or can it can it be that it's within their heart? Only Allah knows what's in your heart. But and isn't that sufficient more that huh? Allah knows what's in your heart? Yeah, we don't know. We don't know. We can't judge. We can't judge. It's a sensitive subject. I can see it's a sensitive subject, but uh, the Quran is clear, and the example yeah. of the prophet is clear. People that people that uh were disbelievers. Uh, it's it's a it's a cut line with Allah, and it's even in the Quran, even in the Quran, um, where it's it's a, where it's a clear line with Allah's judgment on certain things. Um, so, as Muslims, we we can't we cannot um, we can't put our non-Muslim family members in paradise. That's a part of that's a part of this line that's been established for for ever since the life life of the Prophet so um, it, uh, Ibrahim was uh, as it says in the Quran Ibrahim was 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 uh, only allowed to pray for his father because he promised his father that he would Noah was even told that his son is no longer his son and and the Prophet is told in in the in the Quran here with the verse that um. You know, as much as he wanted to, Allah is not going to um, respond to his prayer for his for his uncle. It's not uh, fitting for a prophet or a believer yeah. to yeah. pray for the mushrikeen, those who disbelieve. So we have to leave that up. We have to leave that up to Allah, as much as we love our family members. So the, and put it right into context. Really, put life into context. You have to understand that on the day of judgment, these won't be your family. You will not care about them like you care about them in this life. They will not care about you like they care about you in this life. Period. Your children, your wives, your loved ones, whoever have you, unless they are on the Sirachimus Bethune, right? Unless they are on the straight path, unless they are Muslim, right? Well, those who submit their will to God and their books are given in their right hands, you're not going to be lovey dovey with anybody else. You're going to be trying to get away from people that you once knew and loved, right? And you're going to be trying to get toward people that are on that same, you know, uh, on that same path. Still, to say that only people who are Muslim. No, no, we're not no, saying that's not. Right. Right. I'm not saying only people are Muslim. Yeah. The main thing, yeah, with the over, that we're overlooking here is that. Muslim is not necessarily the five prayers that we do, but it has it's all that. Right. It's Islam in the in the essence of belief in the oneness of God. Right. So if your family and there are Christians that we will also only believe that God is one God, and they don't associate that Jesus is God. Yes. So if there are Christians that are like that and still do Christian rituals, but they believe that God is one God. Then they so are when it's Jesus. like that, that's when judgment comes, right? That's when the law is the judge, and he will judge but, them based on what they. Well, I, okay. So when you are taken from your country of a religion that you think you were Muslim and you brought here and you were indoctrinated, Allah is going to hold those people responsible because they came here against their will. So let's they, take they religion into take another religion. Let's take religion into context, right? Okay. If you take Islam in the context, you understand that the oppressed have a different, uh, a different uh, uh, judgment on the day of judgment, right? Our, our religion is perfect in that the oppressed and those who don't have the ability to change, those who are forced, right, or suffer under compulsion, 
have a completely different uh, uh, mercy on the day of judgment. And it's already stated, already corrected by a loss of family. So we don't have to worry about that, right? We don't have to worry about people who are oppressing, people who are um, doing the best with what they have, right? Um, that's taken care of by a loss of family. What we have to worry about now is in times of comfort, in times of comfort, when we have freedom and we have our ability to do thou or whatever have you. So there's, there's, so for example, there's a Christian pastor or some, some unknown source. He has a big church and um, he is very famously known for like uh, affirming the prophet Muhammad, who's the best to be upon, affirming that he is a prophet, affirming that his hadith are true. Affirming that all of these things are Quran is a book, affirming these things, and all the while he still remains Christian, right? But he knows about the prophet, he knows the message, he reads it, he quotes it, he and he sees it as him being uh, uh, what is it, liberal or whatever, or out or um, understanding, whatever happened. If you die upon that. Then now we get into the fact that you have educated yourself enough to understand truth, right? And it's not that you can just take what you want from it and use it as you please. And just because you sing kumbaya, you're not going to, to, to have consequences, right? It's not, this is not a game. This is a test. It is a test of who can see truth, except as it is, right? And as we see, there's many who have it right in front of their face and can't accept. It. And even if you love them, it doesn't matter, right? That the prophet, his his father, is even in and and his father is even in Jahan. The prophet's father, Abdullah, is even in, in hell by for being a uh, disbelief of uh, a pagan worship, right? Um and he affirms this. So is putting things into to, to context, to proper context, so that we can check on our own desires, so that we will kind of, you know, in our weakness on this earth, our love for one another. The Quran puts that in check, gives us the, the love that we need for one another, not the love that we, we necessarily want. In, in terms of during the time of the Prophet, when the peace and blessing of Allah were upon him, is it not the case that the Quraysh became the Kufas because they disbelieved in what the Prophet was offering? Yeah. Okay, so it's it's the the um, the knowledge of what Islam represents openly being objective to that. Not necessarily, they. I'm having a difficult time trying to express my thoughts. Not necessarily that they what did um, practice this thing. Well, it's it's not. In practicing Islam, it's not in the heart in the law. There is no God but Allah. And the prophet was offering us steps in terms of how to embrace and understand or incorporate that to our lives. With the terms of the Quraysh, they were not embracing those tools which would make them align themselves to the creator, divine creator was saying of this time, even though there were private prophets offering step by step by step to the reality of there is one God and how do we connect to that one God. Mm -hmm. The same prophet Muhammad being the last of the prophets that everyone could embrace these steps if they only choose to. Yes, if they're exposed to and choose to, yeah. Because it's an everlasting, right? It's an everlasting um, miracle of God. And now it's translated into 
many different languages. We have Muslims all over the world given Dawa and this, you know, in the forefront. That's our responsibility. As Muslims here in America, it's our responsibility to give Dawa and to change the nature and the morality of this country for the better, right? Um, and that's through just good works and just being an active Muslim. Um, and also preaching a religion and calling people uh, to what's better, right, than what they may have already. So I guess we start back from the beginning. Do they have to verbally say <laughs> before they make their transition? For what? To be considered what? To be considered a believer? Do they have to actually declare the Muslim has the Muslim has in their heart? And demonstrate it in the action. In terms of what to be considered a believer, is that what you're asking? Because we don't know, we still don't know people. Not that that's that's right. Right. No. And those who know are responsible, but those who don't know, they're not responsible. The Quran answered that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we're going to get a view of yeah. how the people of the book are regarded, mm -hmm. I'll go first to the Quran. And if you go look at Surah Mahdi, where Allah tells each group, that he's given them a make hot a way. Yeah. You know, he said that they should should uh, uh, accept what God is doing. So you got then after that, then after that, he said he gave the Christians a way. Yeah. And then after that, it came to you, Obama. We're giving a make hot a way. And so he said, it's, and it goes like it's it's in, it's in Surah forty three through forty seven. No, I'm sorry, Surah 5, Ayat 43 to 47. Allah says, those things that we differ, this is Quran, that we should work. Go as if we are competing. It's the effects that we do with title. So that tells me that we have a responsibility to work with them. Now, if they're not ready to accept Islam, then they should really be a you know, it's, it's a, that's a difficult situation. But if they work based upon what they believe and they're not rejecting us, but they, 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 uh, they are accepting what God gave them. Say if they, the, the Jews, God said he's given them the law of Moses. Then he talks about the NGO story for the Christian. And until you, oh my, I'm going giving you the Quran. And so, uh, to me, to us, that, that's telling us is that uh, we can't judge them unless they know. Yeah. I can't use the Quran to judge them. They, they're going to have the Jews will have to be judged by the Torah, right? and and the the Christians are going to have to judge by what they claim from God. Yeah. But now, when 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 the truth, the Quran, which is the final book, is made plain to them. Then they are responsible. Mm -hmm. They are responsible. You know, but uh, uh, and even in the Quran, when Allah has a conversation with, with Isa and Jesus, um, and Jesus is saying that you know these people that follow me or whatever have you, everybody's going to be with who they follow on the day of judgment. Jesus is saying that uh, these people that follow me, I didn't tell them to to worship me, um, but they did. If you uh, want to punish them, then you are the, the most just, right? Um, and if you want would forgive them, then you are the most forgiven. And it stops right there, right? That ends the uh, the sort of you know. um, And so we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. A lot is a judge. Somebody can do a good deed and like. Uh, like feeding water to a cat, right? Uh, out of the shoe, or moving a thorn from uh, the side of the road, or whatever, having to be enough for a boss to turn on the island to forgive them because of the sincerity in their heart, right? The loss of most people. Let, 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 me, let me read this um, from the Quran. A lot of times you have to go to the book for answers. Yeah. 
This is from Sura Sura Mahaya. That is uh so it started comes to be a start at Mahaya forty four. My last Mahaya is small. So it was we who revealed the Torah to Moses. Therein were guidance and light. By its standard have been judged the Jews, by the prophet who bowed at been his heart, to Allah's will by the rabbis and the doctors of law. But to them were entrusted the protection of Allah's book, and they were witnesses thereto. Therefore, fear not men, but fear me. So not my sound or miserable practice. If any do fail to judge by the light of what the Lord has revealed, they are no better than unbelievers. 45. We ordain for them, this is, this is, this is the Torah. We ordain for them life for life, eye for eye, nose for nose, and ear for ear, and tooth for tooth. All wounds equal for equal. But if anyone remits the retaliation by way of charity, it is an act of atonement for himself. And if any fail to judge by the light of what the law has revealed, they are no better than wrongdoers. And in their footsteps, we sent Jesus, the son of Mary, affirming the law that had come before him. And we sent him the gospel. Therein was God the light, confirmation of the law, that had come before them. A guidance and admonition to those who repeat the law. Let the people, let the people of the gospel judge by what God has revealed to them. If any do fail to judge by the light of what Allah has revealed, they are no better than those who rebel. 48. To thee, O Muhammad, we have we sent the scripture in truth, confirming the scripture that came before it. And guarding it in safety. So judge between them by what Allah has revealed, and follow not their vain desires. The virgin from the truth that has come to thee, to each among you who have prescribed a law and an open way. If Allah has so willed, he would have made you a single people all of the one week. But his plan is to test you in what he's given you. So strive as it's as it in a race in all virtues. The goal of you is to Allah. And it is He that will show you the truth of all the matters in which you do. And so this is another one. This is this one. Now this is I'm I'm reading the read the image because I think that's what it's supposed to be. Sort of sort of take the paper script. Nine. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So Allah is the best of judges, and He knows what's in the heart. Um, we can only do with what we have available to us. But Allah is the final time and so on. But we can't say anybody's going to hell or hellfire unless Allah is the final time to make it clear uh, to us and to them. Yeah, we might get it the other way too. Same as other way, we can't say anybody's going to heaven, heaven or paradise unless the loss of power of Yeah, that's true. Yes. So we have to Yes. And it should be so that you don't. Think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as uh, strict or as uh, as someone who is as 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 God who will send you to hell. Right? You want to have the best of uh, optimism when it comes. I think Naeem put it like in a not in a Juma one time where he says like if you're on Mount Arafat, you want to be praying as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are all the people on Mount Arafat are all gathered together and Everybody is one person. Allah says there's one person that's going to hell, and out of all y'all and everybody else is, is going to Jannah. You want to be the person that is uh, concerned at least that that may be me, right? But 
Also, it's the other way around. If everybody is going to hell and one person is going to Jenna, you want to be that person that is optimistic that 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 person who points to Jenna is me, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's how we want to think about a loss of tunnel to Island that we're, we're going to get the best as long as we stay within the lines that he was providing us with and Islam is, is easy for us. Yeah, yeah. Allah describes himself as the most merciful. Yes. So he's given us a clear description of who he is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he was, I think he was talking about our Christian relatives and whether or not, you know, we don't want to be like other folks who say, well, you're not practicing my faith, you're going to hell. That's what Allah would say. And we you know we have compassion for our Christian relatives. Yeah, I feel like it's more on us yeah. um, than it is on anybody else to uh, give the example of Islam in a way that can be palatable. Right. I know a lot of our Christian brothers and sisters really would like this religion and this theme if it's presented to them in a way that they can digest it, but it's up to us to to figure that out while we do it. And that's why we have interfaith programs. And this is why we invite, and we should be inviting more of our relatives out for our events. Yeah. And then, and then when they do come, I think they have a good time. They enjoy it. Yeah, everybody loves Malcolm X, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they don't attribute Islam, right, like it should be to, to this message. Uh, everybody loves Muhammad Ali. They right? love him. Christian, Jewish, whatever. But they don't. They they kind of stop when it comes to Islam. And we gotta we gotta push that. It's not how was if I may, how was how was that the uh, leadership uh in so now the program that was given to given by the Muslims here. And one brother got up in front of me, he said, I think it may be the name of another guy, but he has several of those. He said in his talk, he mentioned ICC as being the first mass shooting in Charlotte. Now I'm sitting there. Hmm. I remember a time when they were coming to Duffer City Road mm -hmm. in the morning to use up the store. And Bayless Road Road. You, you can't just, the one thing I respect about some of the brothers that I worked with in the past, they acknowledged that there was work going on in the city. Like he, uh, Brother McGee, mm -hmm. he said he would have stayed down Bay Road Road, but the man sort of ran him away. <laughs> Talked about the press. He, 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 the old man was sincere. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. I had to correct him. So you can't dismiss what has happened. And none of us should be so uh, uh, extreme. Now we can that we can't see what a lot has been doing here in this country long before anyone got the nerve, anyone else to come into the ghettos or go back to the apartments. They didn't want to do that. And you know, and, and I don't try to try to bash them, but if we're in conversation, I raise that issue. You know, don't say that you brought Al Islam anywhere in our community. Now there were people before. Uh, you know, the nation is time and all those people are forced that way. But none of those brothers, I don't know, unless it was Ahmadiyya, that was one group that came in the community, they tried to do some things. They were some of the people. 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 Yeah. They can't, they can't they hear can. on the floor. So can you repeat from the questions? I think. way it was presented to us, so we didn't know nothing about it. I didn't, you know. I, all I knew is that he came over here, our ancestors came over on the ship, and uh, our other ancestors were the world. And we visited where we belong, and that was it. 
And then all of a sudden you heard about the nation of Islam. And you heard about other organizations like um, uh, the, the, the artists. Sir, I'm sorry, but, uh, so I, I, was, I was thinking more of the Panthers. Panthers. <laughs> you heard about stuff like yeah, that, yeah, you know, different nice. organization that was. Yeah, I think like there was a push to get Islam in America, like the late 1800s. But it failed, huh? It failed. Uh, most of the reason that they attributed it to was white supremacy, mm -hmm. um, and that that blockade of this white supremacy or whatever that's keeping them from kind of detaching. And so, you know, you have this uh, tipping point, this perfect this perfect uh, era in which it's just the right message come to get people away from that white supremacy like, concept. And breaking that kind of leads into, all right, now we can really uh, delve into religion and this true religion and separate ourselves from these confinements of Christianity or this, 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 uh, um, this religion that was forced on to our ancestors, right? We can look at it from an objective view and now we can see truth for what it is, right? And like my grandfather told my husband, he said, I, I, he was trying to understand he watched our character and how he said, well, I'm just doing the change. But when he was on his deathbed, all his ministers were coming, he said, There's another thing in the house. And he went to my husband and he said, But it changed our character and the way it changed our lives. That's a, that affects a lot of people. And old people have that deep set and they can see it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 But even now, we don't get we don't get credit for being Muslims in America. It's always. I think you, you speak with Muslims. I think, I think you'd be surprised. People. I think you'd be surprised at how much. Well, anytime that now in the age of information, to speak with Muslims, they always pull an immigrant Muslim. Well, and not been here for a, a, for a number of years, making a way so they could come. I think so. That's you got to be careful with that, right? Because that can lead to um, a play in Shaitan's kind of scheme, right? And separating divides. We're not going to get anywhere in this country unless we come together see each other as, as you know equals right i think that they're with the age of information and with the youth um, and there's acknowledgement more so than before acknowledgement of how african americans have affected islam this country we have like there's classes in universities now um, that that talk about this right and it's not just um just us and our communities talking about it, it's others in the community. Yeah. So, for instance, we have a Turkish community here in Charlotte. People come straight from Turkey. They do a lot of good work. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting with them, and you know, the first thing they told me, uh, he told me, one of the people told me, says, we know and we understand uh, the foundation that African Americans have left in this country for us to come here and to uh, do what we do, right? I, I didn't say nothing. I didn't say anything about anything. He just that's something that he felt like he had to express and say that they know. So you'd be surprised at how much people are, are aware of. It's now I think our dilemma is how do we work together to uh, to make a standard of our objective morality in society where we see society crumbling, falling apart. And the Muslims can fix America and it's the, the country, but uh, we have to be organized to do that. All right, so we ended on the death of Abu Talib, which gave us all these good questions and discussion and insight. <laughs> <laughs> It's fine. Can I write on that? Yeah, I couldn't find my glasses. I can't see. I can see you now. Yeah, yeah, now you got it. Earth wind is struggling. Yes, yes. Next week, we will. Just one other point. Yeah. We do not need to. The history. Yes. If you don't the people don't have that history, like, take it. Oh, no, they're not. And if you cut the roots of a tree off, what happens? Yeah. yeah. And we need to know that because even if I'm, I'm, I'm working with my brothers and whatever, I still have a function. I still have, I still have to know myself. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. We can't just forget about the fact no. that Allah said that Quran that He made us nation and tribes mm -hmm. you know, that we may know one another. That tells me that I have, have to expand my social awareness to the point where I can embrace my brother, my mm -hmm. sister, no matter, no matter from where they come. The law of the does that in the Quran. Yeah, I that's what that he has to mean. know brothers as prophets that came before and what they've been doing, and so he can understand what he's going through now. And we have to address those issues. Yes. Oh, I mentioned you. Mm -hmm. Your pride. <laughs> your pride. That, 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 you know, that a brother asked me, you know, why what, when we get together, why do you talk about chapter 49, verse 13 all the time? I told him because it's a reality among us. You know. So I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to leave George Washington and become from being a slave and then go being a slave for my leech. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We want to be equal. Yes. And you they have to recognize and acknowledge the work that God has done. Yes. 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 I think it comes with us knowing our history too and being confident and comfortable with that. Oh, I, I, it uh, does. It does. I can't yeah. understand why my I have a difficulty and I'm trying to, you know, understand as best I can, but I don't understand why what it is about coming from a Muslim country and you have all of those problems. So you can come and help us, but you got all these problems in your own country. You are the mm -hmm. number one Muslim country in the world. But you, you got all of these problems and all of these backward ways of thinking. And um, so. They got. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, no, yeah. They're all, white well, yeah, superpowers yeah, have all to these, be yeah, trying yeah. to dismantle Muslim countries. Yeah, Muslim they're nation are really the Muslim. World. They're in they're <laughs> internal <laughs> groups for sure. They, but they it's not government. without meddling. They aren't governed by, by, by. Yeah, but look at Saudi Arabia and Yemen. I don't get that. Well, well, what, oh, listen, man. what the point that she's making is, is it go it coincides with the point that she's making. Colonialism, even though we know who's behind these wars, that that colonialism also affects colorism and the racism that plays there as well, yeah. and how people show up in the point that she's trying to make. Right, so it, it all goes together. Yeah, but right. I don't think we should just say that that. Particular Muslim countries have an issue that they're not able to solve as it is kind of just like their own their own neglect that kind of have led to this without an external influence. I don't think that's fair. That's right. I mean, the issue that, that we got, problem. they yeah. got yeah. some yeah. Uh, every issue they have, we got two others. So you know, everybody has their issues. Um, I think that um, when some come to this country, it's uh, more so to assimilate. That may be some of the problem, than to actually um, break this this chain of uh, uh, inequity, right? Um, but that's that comes with you know knowing our history, knowing where we come from, so that when people do come, we can inform them. Uh, this is how things are. This is the history. Don't be um, don't don't follow the mirage of this means in society and we're working to 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 break that chain right um same with knowing your history in islam right it gives you the confidence to be a muslim in the christian nation right and it gives you the confidence to even call people to al islam and to make these connections that we need to make right could it also be that be it colonialism or what other isms that have captured the minds of individuals be in this country or any other country. It's because with Islam and what the Prophet and Allah has given us through the Prophet, it's not just about the prince, uh, uh, the rituals. It's about internalizing Absolutely. those things within the Quran that is to enhance your life. Yeah, that's me and your part. Right, because even though these are the things that's causing these things like the initiator, that doesn't stop anything like right. that on that bus who came from that community to shoot this little girl in the head because she tried to go to school mm -hmm. or from Ray Ray from killing Tyrone. Mm -hmm. You know, even though like all these things are all affected, that doesn't what about the, the growth in ourselves? You know, we all become victims and it's still we still participate. That's you know what I'm saying? That's what she said. You actually Yeah, I mean, but it's not like uh, one thing is that 
things and then it just went with a constant right. it's a constant threat it's, 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 it's never stopped it's, it's and it's everywhere it's, it's, it's not just a Muslim country it's here and i think it's that's everywhere. why a loss of penalty to yeah. ireland is bringing us to this land i feel like that's why i feel like i think uh, many other imams feel like this as well uh, at least in our association and other uh, uh, like uh, going to as well that uh we have the perfect setup here to be leaders right. and That's leaders right. in the world, right. not just in this country, right. leaders in the world, and to bring back the objective morality that many have uh, suppressed and many have uh, uh, not taken as seriously as they should, and to show how Muslims actually should right. operate in the world, right? We have that ability here, it's just harnessing that power. And I think a lot of us have to see ourselves as those leaders because we're not affected or influenced by their cultural identity of Islam. The Lord blessed us, you know, with Islam that's not been tampered with. Yes. And we have to see the, the, the benefit and the beauty and the blessings that we as African American Muslims have. And whereas elders are are those who are seasoned may be more inclined to uh uh hold on to that cultural norm and, and yeah. those things. Their their youth they grow up in this community and become Americans are and actually are Americans, whatever have you, no matter the generations yeah. are understanding this. Yeah. They're understanding how to break those ties and understanding that we need to work together um, in order to, to to make some real change. Yeah. Uh, with our history in mind. That's and, good that you are there. See yeah, yeah. that our young generation are there because you all are doing what a lot uh requires the Muslims to do to work together and not let those things in the past. Yes, and so uh, and it should be on a consistent basis. But you're talking about yes, sir. it shouldn't be okay. We need your help now because you can counterattack it in this place, in that place. Uh, right. so yeah, no. that, nobody reaching out. Yeah, you know, I know they, they uh, I think it's a wake up call that it's not yeah. being consistent, right? Now. I think the facts are still the facts, yeah, regardless of the way it's great to see it idealistically and the way it should be, the way we want to strive for it to be, but. That, that doesn't mean we have to negate what's actually taking place and what actually still takes place, right? The most not community. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing about the people we were them once, inshallah, they'll be us in the future. So that, that, that tension, oh, they didn't understand. We didn't. No, make them aware, talk to them, communicate, and get the richness of the seniors to go to you. And there has to be a line there. It really yeah. is there. I think the condition comes... of they don't know, they owe, they didn't have this, and they didn't. That's not true. I think that comes with the comfort. I think that comes with the comfort. <laughs> <laughs> I think it comes with the comfort of knowing your history. Eventually, they are going to be the senior. Oh, it comes with the comfort of knowing your history, yeah. knowing your past. That's and, exactly and that. And when you're comfortable with that, then you're comfortable with who you are and what you believe, and then you know how to navigate those yes. uh, difficult you situations. Right? I, I know history of my slaves, so when I see somebody that's racist, it's not going to affect me the same because I know that they just don't know. Right? Yeah. Right? They just yeah. Hate, yeah. Right? It's not going to affect me the same <laughs> as if, yeah. and then some, some people, you know, might uh, be very difficult for me, knowing my history, knowing where I come from, brings me yeah. comfort, yeah. and yeah. I'm able to then bridge gaps, right? So I can, I can, uh, I can relate to my Bosnian brother who went through a genocide uh, reunion next this Thursday or whatever. I can relate to my Palestinian brothers and sisters who went through this and that. The third, I can relate to a lot of immigrants that come overseas and from from bad situations, yes, and they may have taken uh, ignorance with them from their culture. I can dismantle that with my understanding of how, you know, history is in America with our ignorant people around us and how to uh, navigate those, those, those so we can come to a common ground, right? So we can give each other on right there. We have a question. Um, yes. So, Scalia. Yes, assalamu alaikum, everyone. And in addition to what uh, I believe it was Sister Darlene Akbar was saying, one of the, the mistakes we make as a Ummah is we either have all young adults, all pioneers, or just 
people around our age group, middle age adults. And when we look at society, even when we go to college, you don't have all 20 year old professors. You don't have all middle age professors and you don't have all pioneers. And the wisdom behind that is because we learn from one another. And you are able to pass on not only wisdom, but also skill sets, generational wealth, build bridges, and you can learn from each other. Even some of the youngest companions of the prophets were excellent leaders. And so when we start, that's just another division of sh the shaitan uh, when they want he wants to exclude a certain um, part of society. That's we don't need any more divisions in our ummah. And right now I'm working with um, a time to be grateful staff. And that's one of the things, inshallah, that we'll be implementing this year. We want our young adults, but we also value the wisdom and all the people who have striven and striven for these 20 years to keep a time to be grateful alive. There, most of them are on a fixed income, but they come every year from all over the United States. And we want to honor and recognize and make it comfortable for them. But that I, I heard somebody mention that you just don't disregard uh, uh, the, the pioneers because that is it'll be detrimental that's where all the wisdom comes in in, in all other cultures and we as African Americans we definitely cannot afford to, to do that um, and another thing that you guys were talking about and I believe Sister Mahasan also had a comment was um, not to you know I like what you said Imam Nasif when you were talking about you know, the believers and Imam Khalil Akbar as well and everyone's comments in, in reference to making Jenna or going to Jenna or going to the hellfire. And we know that only Allah can see in people's hearts. And I was having a discussion as well on this uh, several months ago with Imam Tariq. And he was saying that we also have to pay attention to the signs. We don't know where people are going, but Allah gives us signs. He tells us what a believer is in the Holy Quran. He tells us the characteristics of believers. He tells us the behavior of a believer, not just for everyone else, for us to point fingers, but so we can be striving to live up to those standards. And so we can't go to him saying we don't have an example, even though we have Prophet Muhammad, Sayyidahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah distinctly over and over in the Holy Quran gives us the characteristics of a believer and the things that he loves and the things that he hates. And so that is good for us so we can at least apply that in this life and strive to for it like we do college degrees like we do businesses like we do committees and organizations and events that we can strive for excellence in our dean as well thank you i'm really enjoying this um imam nasif assalamu alaikum everyone thank you. we got one more question yes assalamu alaikum well, who else wants to speak? Assalamu alaikum. I'm sorry, I was on mute. Uh, greetings to everyone. As uh, Assalamu alaikum. Sister Mahasan Abdul Salam calling in. Uh, you always have such interesting events. And uh, I thank uh, one of your members for the notification to tune in. Um, one of the things that I, I work with, I'm an analyst for CWSC uh, Community Wide Shura Conference. And that's the parent company for AM360. I'm a former host there and um, assist with the uh, ability to uh, spread our media, right? Uh, demonstrate how people's intellect is respected and their voices are protected. So I'm a linguist and I'm on the side of stimulating fluency. And this is a word that is not used much because uh, sometimes there's a concern for its meaning, its relevancy. But um, I'm loving the comments that I'm hearing because we have a strong desire to connect and communicate with people. Um, and there are a lot of differences that we end up navigating. So fluency is one of the target uh, skill developments that as we focus in, in uh, I guess you, you would say initiating and, and encouraging interaction, getting to know people, having conversations, building our skills in this area, it's really going to be important for us to elevate our, our capacity to engage people and to stimulate their curiosity, uh, their reflection, 
uh, connections, their ability to advance the desire to know someone through understanding someone. So my question is, does Masjid al-Shahid offer any developmental training or workshops to improve and elevate those skills among its membership? Um, what, what, what skills in particular? Conver basically, we're talking about uh, conversational skills. You no. know, can, can can we talk? And, um, you know, in working with, um, uh, collaborating with other organizations like the Salvation Army, the AARP, I'm a board member of grandparents around the world. We target developing these capacity um, because it assists us in, you know, uh, spreading uh, our vision and mission, but also stimulating people's thinking uh, elements. And once people become curious and use their, expand their thinking and reflection capabilities, uh, conversation naturally flows forth. So I was wondering if you establish that in your masjid, if you offer that. This is no, establishing like a partnership with, she said, the AARP and Salvation Army to... Well, uh, actually, actually, my my organization, which is Center for Living and Learning by Nature, we go in and assist people in developing groups, uh, committees, and their ability to communicate and conversate and stimulate conversation. So I was wondering if you'd do that. And if you would be interested in doing that. Or oh, would we be interested in doing that? Mm -hmm. Stimulating conversations. Conversations. So we have, I mean, skill, skill building. That we work with and different communities that we uh, kind of do uh, work with and dabble with. So um, we do that. Uh, we don't specifically have uh, a, a team that works on specifically communicating and mm -hmm. but um, um, I would say that we do have those connections with other groups working together within the community and having conversations mm -hmm. with those reasons. Mm -hmm. Sister Mahas and I will also address that we used to have our youth as we were teaching them in strong in school we will have them do oral presentations and have dialogues and also we do work with uh we have in the past we need to probably get more uh, in tune and connected with the community but we worked mm -hmm. with um interfaith organizations like method world ministries and our youth we strove we strove to give them opportunities to present not just at the graduations in our own classrooms to each other mm -hmm. to read the Quran mm -hmm. for themselves and to give their own tafsir. We did that every mm -hmm. since they were like in second grade. Mm -hmm. And we know that's the foundation for being able to get up and present and also dialogue, not just at the mass shoot around family where you're comfortable, but taking it to higher levels because that's what's going to be needed in us for us to be able to, as Nasif was speaking to, go into other areas and feel confident, not feel mm -hmm. like somebody's taken over our turf because mm -hmm. Allah says that he will rise up who he wills. Amongst yeah. people because he goes by what's in the heart, not who's not the color. And so, yeah, just that's an excellent question. And, and inshallah, we'll be looking to, to add that that communication strategies into our SES for the upcoming year. But we have had it in the past. Well, for, for, yes. for further going. interaction, for further interaction, I did put my contact information in the chat. Thank okay. So I just ask that uh, anyone who's interested in discussing those possibilities further, feel free to contact me. Yes, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. So, um, we, so, so wait, I see, I, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know if you have several comments. I, think, yes. I agree with what you're saying, the message that you're saying. Um, I just think that we also have to understand that, you know, there's so many people are very complex. So the first point is, is that we're never going to all see everything you say Right, or even if we are all striving to be on our highest level of man or whatever, right? That's the goal. And so that we can come together, right? But the reality is, um, 
like she, she walked out of the sister who's sitting here who came, came from a very different generation of experience, mm -hmm. right? That I have and you have, right? That you're different age and you know, as well. You know, she may have experienced something very different than you and I ever had, right? So her understanding or her whatever has shaped her opinions and understanding of things, even if someone like my mother who is her age, it makes it very totally different, right? Even in both experiencing the same type of whether it's Jim Crow or whatever, right? Not just talk about racism, like being black Americans, you know, which I hate the term black, right? Which is what is black, uh, not me, but that's what we're referring to. And it confuses children even when they're learning colors. Um, but anyway, my point is, you know, it's good to see things optimistically and you want to do things right. But I think maybe it's important to have people who are in leadership, who are not just talking about ourselves. We can't come together alone, you know. We can't build bridges alone. Maybe in other communities that we're referring to, maybe if they had people who also thought that way. But my point is, there's so many different things happening, and there's so many complexities within our communities, their communities, this mass shit, that mass shit. It's just, it's, it's more than about us knowing our history. I think too many of us know our history, right? And we're confident in that. And then we all show up differently and outwardly based upon our own experiences and whatever, right? So I just, I'm just saying, I don't, we can't trivialize it and make it like it's just one answer because that's just not, not, and I'm not saying that's what you were trying to do. What you said was correct. I'm just saying, let's be aware that there's so many different things, you know, that affect everything. And, and, and it's, it's going to be diverse and we're not going to agree. Yeah. I mean, um, what I would say to that is that um, the campaigns of pocket, this investment deal pocket, were the same as well. That they were from different backgrounds, different walks, and they had racism in their uh, um, in their ranks and um, prejudice and things that just come from culture, uh, from the, being bogged down by by life and things before us. And I don't know how you know just the worst that that, that stays with you. Um, and so it was this constant reminder and this constant um, call to sacrifice that for the better good sacrifice that for what is what is better um and to not hold on to those grudges or hold on to that ignorance that that person or whatever but know that a loss of tunnel time is greater um and that your reward is with the loss of tunnel time and not anybody here i'm not trying to impress on whatever anybody here right and so i think that's that's what we have to get at the forefront to kind of and it's not just one answer but that's like the pinnacle that we have to get to and I think all of this or whatever is just a step towards towards that. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. Of, but should we either take advantage of what we have here, or are we just going to go on the way side? Because America is not going to be the same America. Um, it may be sooner than later, maybe later, but it's, it's, things are going to change. One thing for sure. Soon. Yeah, what happens? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The laws in control. Yes. Um, one thing that's very clear when we're talking about the seal and when we talk about the pockets and those around the pockets is that um, your actions don't mean anything without faith, and your faith doesn't mean anything without action. And a loss of power to how it takes care of the rest. Like they don't know what's going to happen. Nobody knows what's going to happen. All you know is that you're supposed to do something. You got to do something. You can't just sit there and do nothing. The, the children of uh, in the cave, they had to do something. And the loss of time was made it out. Um, uh, Hagar, when she's running back, she has to do something. The loss of time was out of it. Uh, Mary, Mary uh, uh, has to do something. Shake a tree, whatever. A loss of time uh, makes, it, makes it have purpose, makes it have uh, uh, good intent behind it, right? Substance. So we just do. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta do, you gotta act, you gotta find ways to, to break, um, disciple each other. All right. All right. Um, so we ended with, I was out of death, and that's what kind of spurred all of these conversations. <laughs> I don't do that. You but we want week. that. We want that. Um, next week we'll have, uh, uh Hadijah's death. Mm -hmm. um, on how that meant, what that means for the prophet. He's supposed to be upon him. We'll have Abu Bakr um, and his disownment from his tribe, um, and what that meant, and uh, the journey of type, right? That, that, that.
very intense moments of prophet goes out to seek help from from others, right? And it's it's met with opposition. So um I spoke with with we're going to offer prayer now and uh, we'll leave the line open if you all want to join us our sister Zahira um, somehow you my, my phone cut off and you were made the host so when we close out, you're going to have to actually close us out so we can close Zoom. She got, okay. Allah, Akbar, Allah, Akbar. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan Rasulullah. أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an la Muhammad al Rasulullah, Ashhadu an la Muhammad al Rasulullah. Hayya ala salah, hayya ala salah, hayya ala al falah, hayya ala al falah. Qadqamati salah, qadqamati salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah.
She's on the street. Allah who had long. Allahu Akbar. Sami Allahu Iman Hamida. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah, Allah, Akbar. سمي الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Okay, sisters are here. You can close us out. 